In this video, I'm going to cover some of the custom reporting capabilities available in the Semantic plugin for Rhino 6. As we saw in a previous video, Semantic is a data management framework that allows users to create and assign custom properties to their Rhino geometry. In this case, I've created a series of custom properties referring to a building program. And these properties include attributes such as program name, the cost per square foot, a department designation, and a building designation. And as I click through some of my floor surfaces defined in Rhino, you can see that some of those properties are changing, in particular the department um, property in the case of my selection here. I also have a series of document level properties that have been assigned in the context of project information. And at a global level, this means I can define properties such as project name, a number, an overall project budget, and maybe a cost contingency factor. Now, after I have these properties assigned, it may be very useful for me to then create a series of reports that summarizes the data that is contained within my Rhino model. And we can accomplish this by going to the Query Manager at the bottom of the semantic panel. And by activating the Query Manager, this will allow me to keep a running list of custom reports that will be stored inside of the Rhino document. I'm going to go ahead and add a new query and start building up a query that's going to describe the total cost by the departments I've defined in the context of categories. So I'm going to go ahead and call this cost by department. And then I have this opportunity to add grouping fields and value fields. A grouping field is going to refer to a field that is uh, essentially going to be a summarization of certain values. So in the case of department, it's going to summarize a group of attributes related to department. And under value, the value fields are going to refer to numerically computed um, expressions of different properties and total them up in the context of things like cost or area and other numeric properties. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the group fields. I'm going to first define the field name and I know I want to have department and maybe I'll use the um, abbreviation DEPT. And then I'm going to designate this to the property called department. So the field name and the property that it's assigned to don't necessarily need to match, although they certainly could. Under the value fields, I'm going to create a new value field, and I'm going to call this total cost. And here is where we can start to enter in an expression that describes the total cost of the department. And if I click down on the expression, you can see that we have a series of available numeric properties that we can draw from. We have the thing like an area of a surface. So we have that being computed for the different floors. We also have the cost per square foot. Um, and we also have this value called contingency, which exists at a um, global level. So to start off, I'm going to use the convention of using a bracket I type in the word area, which will refer to our area property, and I'm going to do a close bracket. And then I'm going to multiply that by the cost SF. And that's going to give us this idea of a total cost per the area of one of these things. And then we can assume that then these computations will be rolled up into the group field, which in this case will be department. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then that query is going to be listed under this query manager. And what I can do is then activate that query. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me this tabular report that's going to show me the listing of every department available in my model. This is again driven by the category field. If I click again on one of these objects, it's going to be driven by this designation here for department. It's then going to take the area and multiply it by the cost per square foot. And we now have this uh, designation here. So what I'm going to do is start editing some of the cost per square foot values. And we can start to see that this report is going to change on the fly. So uh, one interesting technique I can do here is if I want to select all of these departments, if I right click on this department category parameter, you can see that I have this ability to select similar. What that's going to do is it's going to select all of the surfaces that have that particular department value. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this to be a $250 square foot. And what that's going to do is it's going to have changed 
my um, hotel uh, department here to uh, increase because I've increased that particular uh, departmental cost per square foot value. Maybe I want to do the same for the retail here. I'm going to find one of my retail floors. I'm going to right click and do a select similar. That's going to select all these base surfaces. And I'm going to go ahead and lower this to 150. And that will have updated in real time uh, the retail department total inside of my cost by department query. I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to extend my query just a little bit more. So after I close that out, I'm going to go back into the edit menu for that particular query and I want to change a couple of things up here. First of all, I'm going to add in some formatting. I want to make this uh, be currency related. So I'm going to go ahead and find one of these currency uh, uh, formats for the value field. And I also want to add in the contingency factor. So the contingency fact factor is at the document level. This will allow me to kind of globally control an overall contingency assumption of my cost model here. So what I'm going to do is um, put in parentheses area times cost per square foot, and then I'm going to multiply that by a contingency value. And remember, I have to use the open bracket and close bracket like so. So we now have a more extensive formula and this formatting. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to reactivate my query. And what that's going to do is it's going to open my query back up where I now have my total cost being summarized. It has now adhered to the formatting constraint that I implemented, um, which gives us kind of this dollars uh, in currency representation. And it's now also tied to my contingency factor. So if I start to globally manipulate my contingency value, it's going to be recomputing my total cost because it's taking the area times the cost per square foot and then implementing a contingency on top of it. So I can start to do some pretty clever things with formulas, document level properties, and object level properties to give this type of live reporting. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video was this ability to export these reports. So we might have several of these reports defined for a given project, and these are stored inside of the Rhino document. But what I might want to do is export this data so it can be used in another application like Excel or Power BI. And so what we're able to see here is that we have this ability to export. I can choose a particular format to export to. Um, I have the ability to export as a JavaScript object notation, a JSON object, um, Excel, or a CSV. I'm going to go ahead and use Excel for the time being. And I'm going to click on Export. And I'm going to navigate to my folder here. It's got some demonstration information. You can see we have cost by department as the name of the Excel file. I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump into Excel and I'm going to go ahead and open up that particular document. So you can see I have cost by department there. I'm going to hit open. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me that tabular information in Excel. And now I can start to use this particular um, format of data to do other things with it. You know, maybe I want to build a dashboard from this data, or maybe I want to just have a set of Excel files that I can share with a client that relates to the information inside of Rhino. So reporting in Rhino is an extremely powerful feature from a workflow perspective. Um, I don't need to use a computational design tool to get to this level of reporting. I can simply use the semantic plugin to start assigning different attributes to my Rhino objects and then generate these reports and get to some conceptual levels of information that I need uh, for the success, success of my particular project.